Hello, uh, my name is Carol S. V. Wilson. I am a professor here at the University of Maryland in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, and I have a joint appointment with the Institutes for System Research. I am also a member of the Center for Comparative and Evolutionary Biolo Biological Hearing. I did my undergraduate work at Stanford University in Electrical Engineering. I did all of my graduate work from master's to PhD uh, in electrical engineering at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And my dissertation work was with Professor Kenneth Stevens there in the speech group, um, where my dissertation was looking at what is referred to as a knowledge-based approach to speech recognition. Prior to coming here to the University of Maryland, I was an assistant and then an associate professor at Boston University. So I direct the speech communication lab and one area of research we do there is in the area of speech production where we use data like from magnetic resonance imaging to build models, 3D geometries of the vocal tract so that we can understand the relationship between the position of your articulators. Uh, your teeth, your, your tongue, your lips, your jaw, your velum, and the physical signal that's produced. We also do research in the area of perception, where we try to understand what properties of the speech signal are most important for you to be able to perceive particular sounds. And then another area is speech variability, because the speech signal is so highly variable. Uh, how you say something depends a lot on your emotional state, uh, your physiological state. Um, and the main two things that happen is that we don't always reach our targets when we produce speech. So for example, if this is the roof of my mouth and this is my tongue tip, the degree to which I bring my tongue tip up to the roof of my mouth can change a lot. Um, and then the second thing that can happen is that I can overlap the productions of neighboring sounds. So for example, if I'm gonna say the word bridge, I can say the B and at the same time say the R because in the production of B, I'm not concerned about what my tongue is doing. I just need to be concerned about what my lips are doing. And then in the case of the R, I'm mainly concerned about the shape of my tongue and I don't really care about what my lips are doing. So I can do those sounds simultaneously. And then you add in the fact that we can both uh, change the degree of the target and the overlap of these adjacent sounds together at the same time and with varying degrees of strength. That gives you a lot of variability in speech. And that's why right now we don't have a speech recognition system that anyone can go up to and talk to like they're talking to another human being. Instead, often what we have to do is learn how to talk to the computer to optimize its ability to be able to recognize us correctly. That brings me to the applied side of my research, where we take our understanding of speech production, speech perception, our models of speech variability, you know, how the ear produces speech, how the brain uh, processes speech, digital signal processing te techniques and machine learning techniques to develop speech technologies like speech recognition systems and speaker recognition systems. Currently, we are working on speech recognition systems where we're taking the speech signal first and from it going back to what the articulators are doing and using that information to do speech recognition. That also has applications because we can develop technologies to help people who are having difficulty producing speech, whether it's children having difficulty producing certain speech sounds or people who are learning English as a second language and they're learning new sounds that they don't have in their original native language. Another project that I'm working on is looking at the speech of patients who have had glossectomies. That is, a portion of their tongue has been removed due to cancer. And we're building 3D geometries of their vocal tracts so that we can understand how this missing piece of the tongue and the effects of radiation are having on their speech production and how we can help them be more intelligible. 
And then finally, another project that we're working on is in the area of forensics where we're looking at how to be able to tell when someone has tampered with an audio signal. For example, it made someone say something they really didn't actually say.